So what has red lips, looks like it has four legs, and lives under the water? Well, it's the red-lipped batfish. But why would a fish need legs? Well, let's take a look at how this adaptation helps the red-lipped batfish survive. Wow, it looks like it's walking. These legs are actually the fish's pectoral fins, which have become leg-like over many generations. This adaptation helps the fish balance on the bottom and look for food. The red-lipped batfish is a type of anglerfish that lives off the Galapagos Islands. The word angler is used to describe a person who catches fish with a fishing pole. Like their human counterparts, anglerfish just sit still and lure in prey. The prey is attracted to a fishing pole-like projection that sticks out from above the fish's head. There are many species in the Galapagos Islands that have developed unique adaptations. So come on, let's take a look at another one. Next, we have the marine iguana. Instead of climbing trees and eating leaves like their mainland relatives, they swim in the ocean and eat algae and seaweed. Their bodies are dark, which helps them absorb heat from the sun after diving for food in the cold water surrounding the Galapagos. The ancestors of these iguanas probably floated here a long time ago. These islands are mostly desert with just a few leafy trees, so iguanas that were able to eat algae in the water had a much better chance for survival. Adaptations usually develop over thousands or even millions of years, but some species can adapt much faster. So how does that happen? Well, let's go visit Sue's in Indiana as she tracks down some of the fastest adapting species on the planet. Insect populations can adapt quickly to changes in their environment because they have such short life cycles. I mean, some insects can only live a few days. Oh. So that means they can produce a large number of offspring in a short amount of time. So any beneficial traits that are passed on to the next generation might help the species survive. But how do farmers protect their crops from these insects? To find out more, we decided to ask an expert, farmer John Little in Lowell, Indiana. One of the safest ways is using Bt. That is a naturally occurring bacteria that will kill insects. And we can add it to our sprays. So when you spray this whole field, do you kill all the insects? No, not, not all of the insects. Many of the insects have resistance to many different pesticides. So then, in this field, if you had one species of worm that was just eating all of your peppers and you sprayed it, I mean, why is it that some of those would survive and some not? That is just due to the genetic variance between one uh, animal and another. So if the surviving insects reproduce and pass on their pesticide resistance traits to their offspring, they could produce a new generation that could infest this entire field. And when farmers try to kill them with the original pesticide, they won't die. So we have to develop a new mix of chemicals to spray. Some of these insects survive and the pattern repeats. The bug population just keeps adapting to the chemicals. This is called pesticide resistance. Over time, this leads to insect populations that are more and more difficult to control. So science is pretty important in farming too. Next time you're eating some salsa and chips, think about how much work went into protecting these crops from pests. And that adaptation and evolution are going on around us all the time, sometimes quickly and sometimes slowly. Another great reason to never stop exploring your world. So scientists don't really know why the red lip batfish has red lips. But generally, the adaptations an organism has helps it survive in its environment. Get together with your friends and make a list of the possible functions for the red lip adaptation in these fish. 